We examine a lot of cookware in the course of a year of equipment testing here at America's Test Kitchen. But every now and then we spot some twist on the usual pots and pans. It makes us wonder if we're looking at the future. Things like cast iron frying pans that are lightweight, pans with removable handles, brilliant white ceramic coatings on skillets, stock pots with bottoms covered in funky fins that spread heat faster, or the opposite, ones that use a closed layer of oil in the base to slow heat down and even it out. These are not your grandma's pots and pans. But we decided to test innovative cookware in four categories. We have Dutch ovens, nonstick skillets, lightweight cast iron, and innovative saucepans. But before we even tried out some of these special innovations, we wanted to make sure each piece of cookware would function just as well as our favorite traditional version. So first, we put all the innovative cookware through the usual paces that we'd expect of any cast iron or nonstick skillet, Dutch oven, or saucepan. Then we tested the innovative twists to see if they represented a real improvement. Let's start with saucepans. Our favorite all-clad four-quart saucepan, it's a kitchen workhorse. It's got a hefty frame, a deep bowl, a long handle, and a tight-fitting lid. This thing is perfect for making rice, soups, sauces, even pastry cream. The contenders, this pan by ABCT has a mahogany lid that doubles as a trivet and a handle that comes right off the pot so you can serve from it at the table. This one by Christelle is made with five layers of stainless steel and aluminum, and it also has a removable handle. The third is called Twist by Joan London, and it has a built-in strainer in the lid and a keep warm bowl that keeps the pan's contents hot. Now, unfortunately, none of the three were that great as actual saucepans. While they performed well in a few tasks, they just didn't have that all-around excellence of our favorite traditional pan. But how about those innovations? With both of the removable handled pots, these handles just didn't function as well as an attached handle. They may be great for storage or when the stovetop is crowded, but removable handles were just uncomfortable to hold and they didn't really offer a secure, balanced grip. This twist pot with a strainer in the lid sounds great, but solid foods actually blocked the holes in the lid when we tried to pour off liquids. I'll give it this much, the heat retaining bowl worked, but so what? So traditional saucepan, great. Innovators, not so much. Non-stick skillets were up next. We found two white ceramic pans and one with a traditional surface that claimed to be non-stick. And we made fried eggs, we made scrambled eggs, crepes, beef stir fry, and frittata in each of these pans. And while they're all well-shaped pans, the innovations fell short here too. This Gunter Wilhelm fry pan is a five-ply stainless and aluminum pan. It's not non-stick and I don't know why they sell it that way. It was a big heavy beast to handle and it was really sluggish in responding to heat. First it would heat up slowly and then it would race. These two white ceramic pans were better and they certainly improved on ceramic coatings we tested a couple of years ago, but they still didn't beat our favorite. Each of these began to lose its non-stick abilities during testing and it cost three or four times as much as our favorite, which is the Tefal Professional Non-Stick Frying Pan, which will only set you back about $26. Now on to lightweight cast iron. It's a really interesting idea. Cast iron retains heat beautifully for browning and searing, and its sturdy construction means it lasts forever. It's also pretty cheap, but it is heavy. Our favorite 12-inch Lodge Logic skillet weighs just over seven pounds. And we tested three lightweight cast iron pans. First, I have to tell you, they're not actually all that light. Two of them weighed about four pounds, which is heavier than a regular skillet. Another weighed just over two and a half pounds, which is about the same as a regular skillet. So I guess that's better than seven pounds. Next, we wanted to see how they cook compared to regular cast iron. We did a lot of tests. We seared steaks and we made pan sauce with acidic tomatoes and capers to see if they'd react with the cast iron surface. We shallow fried breaded chicken cutlets, we baked cornbread, and we made crepes to look at the browning patterns. We also scrambled eggs without fat. Now we did the scrambled egg test both before and after all the other tests because we wanted to see if the pans became more or less nonstick as we used them. We were pretty disappointed. The lightweight cast iron reacted very rapidly to heat changes and they created hot spots in the pans that meant food browned unevenly. This one by Starfruit browned a little better than the other two, mostly because it's much smaller, almost too small. It also had a non-stick coating inside it that made of black ceramic. That coating worked a lot at first, then it wore down and it began sticking more and more. And unlike a regular cast iron pan, you can't re-season it. These other two pans were equally disappointing. We're gonna skip lightweight cast iron. Finally, I do have some good news. We tested Dutch ovens or stock pots with innovative features. This pan by TurboPot has these aluminum fins on the bottom that are meant to distribute heat rapidly across the bottom surface. 
This is a huge plus when we deep fried french fries because they help the oil recover its temperature very quickly. But that was a disadvantage when we made stew. We had to keep turning down the heat and it scorched the pond so we had to stop and scrub it out and start over. We're not huge fans of this innovation and it only works on gas stoves. Next was the twist by Joan London, five quart cook, strain and serve pot. Now like that saucepan, it has the built in strainer and a keep warm plastic bowl. And while we had some hope that the innovation would work better in this size pot, it didn't. The drain holes clogged with larger foods and the pot itself is really thin and cheap. So we got scorching around the sides where they overhang the little tiny bottom. Now last we have a pan we really liked. It's called the Never Burn Sauce Pot by Polly Cookware. It's got a 10 quart capacity and it costs $229. It's comparable to our favorite Le Creuset seven and a quarter quart round French oven, which is 249. Now this pan has a silicone oil chamber in the base and that provides slow, even heating and it prevents scorching. This thing is very nice. It's well constructed and it performed almost as well as our favorite in every test. And when we left a big pot of chili simmering in it for well over an hour, didn't scorch at all. This is one innovation that really works.